I want to ask you also about the candidate that you're running, yes. Burnaby South. I see, I've seen your tweets lately where yes. you've posted uh, her most recent post on Facebook yes. in which she says, uh, you know, the People's Party of Canada is for all people. As Canadians, we get to live as we please. I love this land as you can be gay, lesbian, trans, pansexual, polyamorous, heterosexual, or any of the many genders that some identify as, yes. in part. In the past, she said, the greatest and most insidious assault against our children that this nation has ever seen and she, she was describing gender fluidity as yeah. that. Do you agree yeah. with that? But first of all, that's her personal opinion. And, and yes, she fight for that at the provincial level. But now she's doing politics at the federal level. And she has the right to uh, her own opinion. And, you know, she expressed that. And I respect it. Uh, and also, she knows that uh, we're doing politics at the federal level and education. It's a 100% of provincial jurisdiction. So for me, uh, that's, uh, that's her opinion, and I respect it. Doesn't somebody's personal opinion, though, help people understand what their character is like? I mean, she's not just saying, I, I prefer you know, beef for dinner. She's, she's labeling gender fluidity, this idea that... Uh, you know, certain kids aren't sure how to identify as the greatest and most insidious assault against our children that this, that this nation has seen. She said, as soon as the LGBTQ spots you in this nation, what they do is they call your employers, they call the CRTC, they call whatever organization you're working with, and they begin to backstab you. They get everyone around yeah, you Yeah, what she's saying, she's against the state in B.C., the government in B.C., to impose... Uh, to teach to the young people, the children, that, uh, you know, if they, if they are born a boy, they can be uh, girls, and if, if they are born a girls, they can be a boy, and they can choose that. She's against that. Are that's, you against that? That's her personal opinion. I, I, I don't want to, uh, I, I don't express any opinion on that. I'm doing politics at the federal level, and it's not something that is uh, uh, under our radar at the federal level, so uh, I won't answer that question. But for her, she believes in that, and that's okay for me. And, uh, you know, she has the right of her own uh, religious beliefs, and that's okay. You know, we're in a free country. Even if some would call them but she know, has, homophobic or if they would call them discriminatory. But You're she, okay with your candidates holding those kinds of but views? She has friends in the, the... She has friends that are transgender. She has gay friends, and they know that she's not against them. She's against the fact that the state wants to have a course teach young children uh, and telling them that may, may, maybe they're not a boy or maybe they're not a, a girl. So she's against that fact. But and some kids may not be sure. Some kids... Yeah, but they will be able to decide that when, when, when they will be uh, uh, 18 years old. You know, it's young kids and you're telling them a kind of a confusion in their minds. So that's her point of view. And you sound you, like you agree with that point of view. No, I'm just explaining her point of view. That's the real point of view. You can go on Twitter. Do you you can so do you think gender fluid should be taught in schools. But I, I think that she has a point, but for me, I don't. I don't want to go in, in deep in that debate. It's not a federal debate, but I respect what she said. So, what's the line for you about what your candidates say? Then, what is there? Is there? They have the know, right to have to their any kind of opinion. They have the right to have their own opinion. You know, <laughs> the most important for us. Uh, we have we have a platform, a very strong platform with bold reform, and we ask our candidate to sign a pledge that they will fight for our platform to be adopted, and so that's important. And she believes in our platform. So, would your platform ever address issues like same-sex marriage, no, issues no, like abortion? Are you no. going to touch the social issues at all? No, it's not part of our platform. And you don't intend it to be. No, I don't. And I, it's not the first time that I'm saying that. Welcome back to Power and Politics and the Power Panel. Jen Gerson, Marcella Monroe, Rob Silver, and Tim Powers. Earlier on the show, I spoke with People's Party of Canada leader Maxime Bernier about some recent eyebrow-raising tweets and one of his first two candidates running under the PPC banner, Laura Lynn Tyler Thompson, who has publicly stated that gender fluidity is the greatest and most insidious assault against our children. The comments that she, that, that candidate made were about gender mm -hmm. fluidity being taught in schools, mm -hmm. not the concept itself, but, but being taught in schools. Tim? Ah, Max, what do you say? Well, give him credit for this, for a party that in every national poll has not yet reached 2% and sometimes barely claws over 1%. He gets a dist 
inordinate amount of attention. So he's doing something right to generate attention. He seems to be doing something right if you count being right attracting people to your cause. But what is that cause? I, I, look, I think the answer he gave you is, is very weak. If it was any of the other parties that had a candidate that had made the statements and behaved the way this uh, PPCG, whatever the hell the party's called, candidate uh, is uh, is behaving People's or had party that, of Canada. they would have been PPC. turfed. They would have been turfed. They would have been turfed by the other parties. Um, <laughs> but he's saying that's not, that they're entitled to their personal opinion. He would and not say what the line is, but before that opinion is egregious great, to him. Great, great. But, but I, but I, but I mean, yeah. And there's the, certainly. I'm not naive enough to suggest there's not an audience for uh, for this. There is, but I think people, particularly those who may be conservative and are thinking about, well, I like Bernie as an individual, but now they see him as a party leader. Uh, I mean, he's flirting and skirting, if not outright embracing some things that are racist, xenophobic, and hugely problematic if you want to be a Canadian leader who has a meaningful and important place in the Canadian political ecosystem. Jen, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I think Tim sort of said it, is what, what exactly is the cause that, that he's espousing here? It's not libertarianism. Uh, that's, that doesn't seem to be the common constellation of issues that he's addressing. Um, for those of us who've sort of been watching uh, what's been happening with right-wing populism, the alt-right, the rise of these sorts of ascendant movements, um, particularly in the United States, uh, uh, Max Bernie is really pulling out all the greatest hits. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a lot of paranoia about transgender, or sorry, transgender issues um, and gender fluidity theory. Um, you know, I think we as a civil, the civil society should be able to discuss yep. and debate gender fluidity and these sorts of issues, but to, to describe it as like the number one threat affecting children. <laughs> <laughs> but his candidate is, he's not. Well, I, no, his candidate is, but of course, I mean, but, but, but look at who, you know, you can tell a lot about a party by looking what, about what, yeah, sort of, what sorts of candidates it attracts and what sort of candidates get greenlit, right? So to say that this is no reflection on the party, no reflection on Maxine Bernie at all is, is, is disingenuous. Also, I mean, let's look at what he's just tweeted, the, the Agenda 21 stuff, the, um, the anti-immigrant stuff, the, um, uh, uh, the paranoia about a one-world government under, under the auspices of the UN. I mean, again, uh, it, if you're not paying attention to this stuff, it all sort of seems like it's a giant jumble that's just coming out of nowhere. But if you're watching what's happening with the alt-right and you're watching with the emergence of, of what's happening in, 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 in far-right populist movements, it's all of, 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 of the same cue. It's, it, it's all coming from the same playbook. Uh, it's very, very familiar stuff to those of us who've been watching what's been going on down there. So, like, it's very clear to me what, what playbook he's reading these scripts out of and, and who he's trying to attract and what he's trying to foment here in Canada by hitting all of these notes. They're, they're not original. They're not new. Um, they're very uh, um, uh, obvious. And um, the concern that I have is, is when it comes to particularly some of the conspiracy theory stuff is that conspiracy theories are a little bit like an intellectual disease, that once your critical fa faculty starts accepting that you know, the prime minister is out to create a one world government under um, the UN, you know, it, it's really a very short leap from there to you know, the globalists and the Jews and all sorts of crazy stuff starts to come out of the woodwork and that's where this is going. Okay, I actually asked him about that tweet because he had tweeted out, I want to play the clip of what he said. Uh, he, he basically said that the Prime Minister is in favor of a world government and asking, is he loyal to Canada or loyal to a world government? Sorry, do we have the clip? Or, no, we don't have the clip, never mind. So he, I'll describe what he said then. Uh, he, he basically said that there was some group in 2010 that had come out talking about a world government and alleged the Prime Minister was supportive of that and then said we should be asking if he still is. And I pushed him very hard on whether the Prime Minister has ever shown any sign of ceding sovereignty and, and uh, he, he didn't provide an example. Yeah, this is Alex Jones stuff, right? Like this is your tinfoil hat is bringing mm -hmm. out the crazy in your eyes uh, type uh, things and accusing the Prime Minister, whether it was Stephen Harper or Justin Trudeau, of disloyalty to the country because of some, you know, some, some UN organization that wants to reform the way the UN is governed, whether you think it's a good idea or a bad idea, is um, he's doing, as Jen said, uh, very eloquently uh, for very specific reasons. It's interesting that he doesn't, as a politician, have the capability in a live interview to articulate things in the way that yep. his people can in social media. It will be interesting in the campaign how disjointed that becomes mm -hmm. and therefore how that plays out in the day-to-day -day thrust well, he's of... He's very different in person than he is on social media, A hundred percent. 
The challenge is, um, to some extent, he has, I don't know if forced is the right word, Andrew Scheer has made certain decisions along the way to triangulate on some of the positions, not the global conspiracy stuff that, yet, uh, but certainly in terms of the migration uh, pack stuff. I don't think if Maxime Bernier is pushing it to the extent he is that Andrew Scheer necessarily uh, comes out or at least comes out as vocally as he does. So two things can be true at the same time. He may not ultimately matter in terms of splitting the vote because, as Tim said, he hasn't gotten over 1%. We'll see how, and again... Long time to go. Long yeah. way to go. It could be centered in a few ridings. Yeah. Like, it could have an impact. But if, you, if, if, for a variety of reasons, the Conservatives feel that they need to or they want to hold on to that rebel uh, vote, to use a shorthand, uh, maybe an unfair shorthand, but as a short uh, hand, and therefore push their positions on certain issues to that, that has an impact uh, that forces choices, at least by Andrew Scheer. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Can we discount that that vote, that segment of the population? I mean, he is he is popular. I know we're talking about poll numbers, but uh, there are a lot of people, and I hear from them very often, who are supportive of at least his his candor. Yeah, well, you can't, sorry, you, you can't discount it. I, I think that, um, you know, we are, this is, this is, it's very serious what he's doing, right? I, I don't know him well enough to know whether he thinks he's just playing a fun game, trying to upset the apple cart of a party he feels, uh, you know, slapped him in the face, uh, or if he, at the depths of his heart, understands what he's doing to the body politic. But, you know, nominating, allowing the nomination of this candidate and then having the wherewithal to come on your show and uh, kind of act like concerns about her views are irrelevant uh, when she has been active. I mean, this is a woman who has actively campaigned uh, on these issues for the last, I think, couple of years. She ran a very aggressive campaign for uh, city council in Burnaby. Uh, where she uh, basically went around the city uh, and talked to various groups and pumped up this fear about gender fluidity issues in the classroom. She did this for months. So this is not, you know, this is not nominating someone who she just for has city council or for a trustee. I, I'm, uh, it's yeah. All, okay. All. Sorry, but just, sorry. Just let me finish. So you can't, you can't look at that and say, oh well, it's just her personal views. It won't affect the party. If that, in fact, you know. I guess by some strange weirdness, if she was elected to Parliament, um, you know, is he actually trying to say to us she wouldn't be espousing those views in Parliament because those aren't the oh, views of the party? I don't oh, think that that's no. true. Um, and I also think, you know, he doesn't seem to have any care for analysis, what it means in having her as part of those debates. If he really believes those aren't issues he wants in a federal party situation, then I think he's being disingenuous. What, what I have you, to wrap so quickly. I was going to say, what you call candor might also be described as pander. He's not a stupid man. He gets that. To, the, none of this he talked about before. And even in that candidate you're talking about now, she's had to go online and defend Maxine Vernier for believing in some of the things that she does. Well, so, she walked them back. She, yeah. she, she walked them back. Yeah, I, just tried to, to. I just wanted to mention, not to be pedantic, but we have a parliamentary system. It's not the Maxime Bernier yeah. show. He set up this party where it's, it's my views and everybody just must accept the views. And to some extent, all the parties are like that, except we are electing 338 people in parliament. Who he has run for him, that is the party. It's yeah. not just him. That's how our system works. We can wish it otherwise, but that's the it system. Okay, stay with us. The Power Panel will be back for a final round after this.